We, uh, we want to encourage our members to submit their games so that we can put them up here on the slab, uh, <laughs> you know, like carefully dissect them, you know, make you all want to crawl home, <laughs> like, well, did I do everything wrong? And uh, no, we want to we want to see uh, some fine battles, and this is just a great opportunity. I mean, I would, like when I was starting, this would have been great, you know, like, please, you know, here, it's a, tell me what I'm doing wrong, or right, as it may be. And of course, uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a very uh, distinguished guest with us to, today, uh, International Master John Donaldson from the Mechanics Chess. Club, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's very, very nice for him to be here. So the first game we have a cattle hand playing the cattle hand. No, no cattle hand Benoni. So, I mean, I don't even know what to call this variation. The Benoni. Does it have a name yeah, other than Fi and Shadow? Yeah. That's just it. Okay. So great. I. Uh, I've had this position as black on a couple of occasions, and uh, at the time that I played this line as black, I should say, I was very attracted to this move, b5, because I thought... against Albert Howell, and I played b4. Okay, right. <clears throat> and so, at the time that I played b5, this was like the coolest thing, and I always, you know, prided myself on... Uh, getting in the b5 before white's got in a4 knight c3 and uh, and uh, the line the, the games I had very much went in in my favor early uh, bishop g2 uh, d6 and if white just didn't do anything I transposed into a line where my pawn was on b5 later some guy I think his name was Kasparov yeah 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 that's right Kasparov came up with a move that was really kind of uh, a great deal of consternation with this move before. before. What, what, White, what Gary's idea was he's willing to sacrifice a pawn, when wasn't he, uh, for really active dynamic play with knight f3. So his idea is he simply wants to put his knight here one day. And in the meantime, it's not like this majority is doing anything, and it, it was a very weird idea. Uh, today, in modern chess, da -da, uh, the move e4, which you just mentioned, was, uh, has become like a very principled move. I mean, I must say, when I played b5 in the good old days, if somebody had played e4 against me, I would have thought, yeah, the guy doesn't really get it. You know, he doesn't, <laughs> he's hanging the pawn, you know, I take the pawn. But uh, my Dutch friends, Erwin Lamy and Jan Smates, both think that e4 gives white an advantage. And it's kind of, what? And you won the game, right? So, well, the idea is kind of straightforward that, okay, you take, he takes, or is it queen e2? Queen e2, sorry, excuse me. It is queen e2. Queen e7, uh, and how does it go? Bishop. Yeah, bishop g2. And, I mean, and, and so, like, like the. Like and right. So, like, obviously, uh, a big problem is that if the knight were to go back to f6, there's a, a crook in the corner. Queen takes and d6 wins material. So, if you play knight d6, is it simply bishop f4 no, or? Bishop uh-huh. And the idea is black's pieces are a bit contorted. His knight is not <coughs> terribly happy on the d6 square. The queen's not terribly happy on e7. And the positions work out very favorably, interestingly enough, for white. I don't know if e4 is a computer-generated idea or somebody came up with that independently, but it sure does put a, I think, you know, the, the move b5 under a cloud. Okay, but okay, black just continued in the, the, the normal style. Knight c3, everything is fine. a6, a4, knight d7. So here, I think, is like really the first kind of key critical moment for Black, 
OK, so everything's cool. Bishop f4, queen c7. I think that move is OK. Um, hmm. Yeah, I suppose I, I think queen c7 makes a, it's always, a, it, it's all, I think it's always kind of tough for black in the Bononi to decide where the queen is, is best placed. Uh, I've seen uh, Vesel and Topolov as black in a number of Bononis. And one of the things I've noticed in his games is sometimes he puts his queen on e7 and then he drops it back to f8. It's sort of like the queen, he, he reckons that that the queen is better placed on f8 for specific reasons. And um, OK, uh, queen c7, knight d2. I like this move very much. White is intending uh, the idea of Nimzovich to stick your knight on c4. Knight h5, bishop g5. I suppose this idea. <coughs> is uh, white wants to coax black to play h7, h6. Yeah, it's like your, 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 your feeling is that the pawn kind of stands out a little bit more as a target on the square h6. Uh, again, uh, for some strange reason, this, this variation in particular seems to bring out all kinds of exchange sacrifices. And Again, I kind of recall people playing moves like f6, bishop e3, rook e8, and rook takes bishop. So black's trying to <laughs> sacrifice his exchange. And if black wants to play with the move f5, which he sometimes very much wants to do in a Benoni, he probably doesn't need it to play. He doesn't need h6. h6 is, in fact, a weakness. So h6, bishop back, he does play f5. Okay. So probably it would be, if black wants to play the move f5, he would probably be a little bit better off doing it in this way. On the one hand, you might say, well, it's not that big a deal. And it probably isn't. But the pawn on h6 can actually be in the way, in a very funny way. Again, if we do something very illegal, we take this rook and we snatch that bishop, and we recapture, you would probably want to have the opportunity for bishop h6 at hand. OK, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, I know it sounds weird, but somehow I, it, it's shocking, I know. People actually really do give up this bishop from time to time. Sometimes they just take this knight and you know, they, they, they do it because it means they can play b5 or for some other wonderful reason. Well, you're less likely to depart with the bishop on g7 for the knight on c3 if your pawn's on h6, OK? So just a few things there. I'm just saying that uh, if you're going to play with f5, I don't think you want to play with h6. And so probably f6 was a better move. But anyway, OK, let's see. h6, bishop back, f5. Knight comes to c4. Knight, knight b6. That strikes me as a strange move. Mostly, uh, I think, Benoni, ah, well, here's, a, here's one simple reason why uh, the preferable knight e5 is because after takes, if you take now, having coaxed that pawn to h6 makes all the sense in the world. And white would be very happy munching a peshki. OK. And this is actually strategic disaster. Pardon me. I wanted just to mention that this is really a strategic disaster for black. Oops. Yes, we accept that. This <laughs> queen d5 check, bishop c5. I mean. Uh, White's game is just killing. It's killing. OK, so that's why we see a knight b6, knight a3. Uh huh. Very nice. This is also borrowing a page from Korchnoi and many others. White isn't eager to exchange knights. He's ready to play a5. Knight moves and brings his knight back. Another thing just in this position, um, 
uh, one of the things that White oftentimes considers is, is playing an anti-positional move like f2, f4. But if it means that that stops any black's activity on the king side, it's rather a good move to be uh, on a list of candidates. Bishop d7. I'm not sure that move really f is desirable. Yeah. Yeah, you put your knight on c8, and then you suffer. It's like you put your knight on b6, you suffer. You put your <laughs> knight on b8, then you suffer. I think it would have been in black's interest to play f4. Probably you're not interested in, in capturing. Exactly. You probably want to play a move like bishop d2. And let's just for argument's sake say in this position, it's, hmm, it's probably time. I hate this knight on b6. It's probably time to bring the knight back to d7. This, the, the, the nice little difference is in this particular case, thanks to the pawn already being on f4, the pawn on h6 is sheltered. Right? Not that knight c4 is uh, required or anything like that. A uh, move like e3 is actually interesting, although I must confess that at least black is, is doing something. He's got a square or two, meaning g4 as a, as a potential square. I don't like the move bishop d7. Uh, uh, one of the things about the Benoni is like there's no going back. You know, I mean, whether you like it or not, you know, you got to ride the tiger for, 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 you know, for all it's worth. If black is going to play f5, and, he, and uh, white is not playing a move like f4 to stop him, then black just has to go. <laughs> just, I mean, you, 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 you can't hold the position. It's like you've, you've made a, a lot of strategic um, uh, strategic concessions already. Thank you, John. You've been reading my books. <laughs> uh, you, you know, Black has made a lot of concessions and it's sort of like uh, he can't simply repair them, but he can go ahead. And that's why I think Bishop D7, I don't like that Is move. There a, a tiny bit slipped up the, the move order. <laughs> I, actually, when I played Bishop D2 first, but it's going like, to transpose for a second. Rook B8, A5, Knight. Ooh, B5. Uh, I don't think I like that move B5. The problem is, is when, as long as white's keeping his pawn on E2, He's not killing his bishop on g2. What I mean to say is that the bishop on g2 x-rays the c6 square. You put the pawn on e4, and just for argument's sake, you trade two pawns. Then the bishop on g2 doesn't radiate here. When you play the move b5, the c6 square is going to be too weak. Maybe black uh, should have played bishop b5 here. How would we assess this position? I'm pretty sure Walter Brown, for one, would really like White's position after, for example, the small little move b3. He just likes the space of the d5. He likes the safety king. And it's just not easy for black to generate play. It's like his knight on h5, his knight on c8 are poorly placed. So this is just a good position for you. But even having said that, I think after your opponent's decision, it suddenly just becomes a great position for you. There was a very yes. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's uh, that's a big concession. There was a very nice game. It was played, let's say, in the last year. It was uh, between Vladimir Kramnik and Fabiana Caruana, where it was uh, a Benoni type of thing. And uh, 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 Black was in really, really uh, a lot of trouble, Vladimir Kramnik uh, was. And um, I was just uh, very impressed, let's put it that way, with the way Karyuana played that particular game. Now, after knight a5, we can just kind of stop right here and say, 
this has been a, a, a a big opening success for white. I think white just has uh, a very nice position, again, thanks to the fact that c6 is in white's mitt. This pawn on a6 is a little weak, and it's very hard for black to do anything impressive on the, on the king's side. Uh, f5, f4 is being stopped, and who knows, maybe if white has everything, he'll play rook e1 and e4 one day. Uh, advantages across the board for white. Bishop b5. Hmm. I must say, I think I'd grab that bishop as well. Um, I was just trying to decipher whether knight c6 immediately or not. The difference is, is after knight, okay, let me put it another way. If we start with knight takes, pawn takes, knight c6, we're rather encouraging our opponent to play rook a8, right? So if we play knight c6 first, maybe we're giving them, uh, I mean, after the move rook a8, um, we can always play knight takes b5, right? But maybe he'll play something like rook e8 or something like that, or rook b7, I'm not really too sure. I guess he would have to play rook a8 in any case, no? And then we could take, it's just kind of a, a move order type of question, like which would be the more accurate move? But okay, you took, nothing's wrong, and now you went bishop a5. Okay, now let's just see for a moment. Um, I suppose in this re position the reason you didn't want to play something like queen c2 is maybe the knight would jump to c4, and it's okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of nice. I, I, okay, I'm not saying this is this is a reasonable move. I always like as white getting rid of that bishop on g7. So I'm thinking about bishop c3. To just uh, yeah, exactly. All right, let's see. Bishop a5, queen b7, queen c2, knight to the side, knight a4. Um, I, uh, why didn't he play knight c4? And did you have a line in mind, bishop c3? Knight f6. Right. And life just goes on from here. Well, it's a, I mean, I think it's, again, I think it's a very, very nice position for white. You've even got ideas, I don't know. One idea even is to go b4 and try to take this guy to get this guy up the board. Another idea is maybe to play just simply e4. Um, I like white's position, but knight a4 looks a little bit suspicious. Uh, queen b3, that looks suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, with the move queen b3, you're definitely introducing the threat of rook takes a4. I'm, I was just thinking that this knight was a little offside. I thought your intention might have been simply to play rook a2 and, who knows, b3 to try to drive him back. Um, queen b3, I don't know, kind of looks a little bit awkward. And you are provoking, hopefully, oh, he... Yeah, here he spent like all of this time. Wow. Wow. Right. Okay, so let's uh, so take me through it. What had your intention been after knight takes b2? Uh, new variation. Sorry, I just want to make sure. Yep, new variation. Pardon me, sorry. Rook on a1 to b1. Okay. So now I understand that I can't retreat my knight thanks to the fact that my queen is hanging on b7. No, hate that. Okay, but can I protect my knight another way? Can I play b, um, c, c5, c4? Yeah, and now you've got to, I presume, move your queen. 
queen to b4. Okay, so in this case, after queen b4, then I can at least uh, play c2, c3. Let's see, in this position, maybe you could go queen c2, right? Okay, so you're still threatening to play rook takes b2. And once again, in case of c3, bishop takes c3 looks kind of deadly. I don't like uh, black's chances of surviving here. But maybe after queen, oops, sorry, queen back to c2 for just a second. Uh, black has some other moves to consider. I mean, as mentioned, the most, single most topical thing in any Benoni is to sacrifice an exchange. Whoever gets the first <laughs> opportunity to sacrifice the exchange, you know, uh, it, it's in the cards, they have to go for it. So something like this, at least from Black's point of view, introduce some sloppiness. I mean, the imbalances, probably Black's position is not that great, but, mm, you know, White has to work out some, some, some tactics. I mean, if you take the knight, well, okay, first of all, I could take the rook, but even if I don't take the rook, two connected pass pawns with a good bishop on g7, that should, should serve as fair compensation. So if I were black, well, black kind of committed himself with a move knight a4 anyway. He almost had to take on b2, right? I mean, having said a, you got to say b, or, or c4, b, uh, knight b2. So rook here, is it? So you say he took all of his time yeah, and... That's what he's calculating, but he falls for that fourth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So rook b1, c4. Yeah, I thought c4 was just terrible. The move might be in the tempo and then I get 4 Yes, <laughs> uh, yes, true. I wanted that knight on b2 a moment ago. Oops, dope. Now the compensation looks like no compensation that I can see. I mean, if there was a knight on b2 and a pawn on c3, we could kind of like, you know, bring ourselves to believing that, you know, there's something, some happiness at least for black. So here, it's a case of your, well, you had to make an awkward move there, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it's, it starts to look really good suddenly. So you're an exchange to the good, very good thing. <laughs> And um, you're just about to play moves like bishop c3, e4, rook d1, and then, you know, try to grab some more material or do, do something to further improve your position. But exchange to the good, you just got to avoid the blunder, <laughs> right? the dreaded blunder. <laughs> you know. in, in the Northwest, John, John Donaldson and I were just talking on our way here. We were saying Victor's pooples. Victor's Pupils, a famous, famous master from the Northwest, is now playing in Reykjavik, in Reykjavik Open. And uh, we used to play Blitz together, Victor's and I, for hours on end where he would sing me poetry, you know. And he said, he, one of his favorite kibitzes was, you know, like, I see a lemon and a lemon sees me. <laughs> he, he'd make a blunder. So, uh, you've got to avoid the lemon. <laughs> okay, knight f6, queen d1. So you're untangling very nicely here. This looks very nice. Okay, he's doing his best to be annoying. He wants to play b5, b4. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're cruel. <laughs> Stopping his front. Oh, doesn't that invite you to play e4? And you did. Uh, very nice. And I could already see how he was going to lose. I knew he was going to blunder in the play. And in, in the way he... Uh, yeah. Well, he... Yeah, well, here he's got real issues because this bishop on g2, which is kind of dormant, if it ever gets on e4, or if, if you get a weak pawn on f5, bishop h3 is going to really be a... a, a clinker kind of move. So after e4, I think it's now decisive. Your advantage uh, has, has really grown. Uh-oh. Ruh-roh. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, with a double attack against the knight on e8, the pawn on f5. Now you've got ideas like queen f5 and bishop e4 as well. So I think this is probably a good time for him. Yeah, he gave it a rest. <laughs> Very nice. I think that was a pretty good game. Right, everybody. Yeah. But I like that one. That was nice. That was well done. OK, so we have a game submitted. This is right. It's Peter, yes? OK, so let's see what Peter is. This uh, was from a ladder tournament played here in, in the club uh, not too long ago, February 25th. OK, you were white. d4, knight f6, c4, e6. Very nice. Knight f3, d5. Uh, new main line. OK. Uh, Dennis H. Dennis Howerton. Nice. D5, knight c3, b6. Yeah, Peter was right. Now here, black made a move. I think that kind of gets condemned, although it doesn't on the surface appear that wrong. b7, b6. Yeah, I mean, I think for the better part of, you know, 16 centuries, <laughs> people have been playing either bishop e7 in such positions or knight bd7 only after they put their king in the corner, uh, you know, tuck their king over on the king side do they start worrying about b7, b6. And probably they do this type of thing because at some moment when their king is still in the center, there might be a disruptive bishop b5 check. Let's see how this game actually unfolded. So b7, b6 is, I think, frowned upon. Uh, but it doesn't look to be that bad a move. e3, OK. I probably would not have played e3 um, because you know, I like to talk to my pieces and ask them if everybody's OK. So when I play the move e3, I can almost hear the bishop on c1 yelling, you know, like, get me into the game, coach. Get me into the game. And when I play a move like e3, the bishop says to me, you know, like, dude, you know, I could have been an all-star, you know. <laughs> I, I could, you could go to bishop f4, maybe with so, certain evil intentions like knight b5, or the more direct bishop g5, simply making the pin, as is the usual queen's gambit, and to try to... Uh, put pressure on the d5 pawn. So e5, e3 is not a bad move. I'm just saying that the bishop on c1 hates your guts. <laughs> e3, bishop b7, uh, bishop d3. It's all good. Bishop e7. Now I think black can be reasonably satisfied with his opening, with the outcome, I should say, of the opening, b3. Knight B D uh, Knight B D seven, Bishop B two, very good, C five, okay, so uh, very normal looking Queen's Gambit decline type of position. It's like one of those things that uh, it's like everybody's willing to accept hanging pawns. Should Black capture on D four, Black White would likely recapture with his E pawn. The same, uh, so takes, 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 takes. So white gets hanging pawns. And then in some ways, I guess not in this particular position, takes, you could take with a pawn, but probably taking with a knight is fine. OK, but uh, one thing's for sure, if you're going to want to go queen e2, rook c1, rook d1. It does, doesn't it? It looks like a, it's transposed into uh, a Queen's Indian. OK, normal position, let's just say. c5, rook c1, nice, developing. Now I kind of like this move by black knight e4. Hmm, not too sure. I think if I were black, I would have probably captured, captured, and just given White what he wants, which is uh, the hanging pawns. 
I'm looking for clarification in my <laughs> game. <laughs> okay, so 94 looks okay. Nothing wrong with the move 94. Maybe my my approach uh, a little bit of a personal difference. Okay, uh, I've seen in in very very similar positions many grandmasters playing this move knight e2. It's like it's not that they're uh, want to avoid trades or anything like that. It's just that uh, they much rather bring their knight to g3, or in some cases their knight to f4, and they think the knight can be actually a better use uh, on the king side, especially after black makes this whopping howler. So in the north. Yeah, in the Northwest. Yeah, right. Well, in the Northwest, um, we, we have this expression, howler, to describe a really, really, really bad blunder. That's your, 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 your cries of anguish after the game can be heard in the next county. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah! Why did I play F? That's a real howler because it's a huge, huge weakness. And anybody who plays the Stonewall Dutch uh, is very, very cognizant of the fact that, you know, when you've got your pawns on f5, d5, and e6, you don't leave the e6 guy uh, too weak. And now he makes your knight e2 look brilliant, because bang, knight. <laughs> yeah, well, knight f4 is just like how sweet it is, you know. I mean, uh, gift me to pop. And from his point of view, there's no really appropriate rook f6 just simply walks into a, a discovered. So that's not happiness. Anything else is just allowing knight takes e6. So he was forced. You know, necessity is the mother invention. King f7, not the ideal move. And now, you're probably smacking your lips, thinking, boy, I've got to get to him. CD? The idea was to activate the light switch, get him on the king, take yeah. over uh, e6. This looks really good to me. D takes c5. Now, let's see. If we take with this knight, we're allowing this knight to jump to e5 with a check. We can't take with this knight. That would hang the pawn on f5. If we take with the pawn, then your knight is done, takes and knight, knight e6 check. So you're on the verge of winning material. So this is looking really good. I mean, and lastly, and it's a, probably a, a very important note as well, that if you were to play your bishop to b5, you'd be threatening to take and jump to e5 with a check and a fork. So that it's all looking good. Oops, I guessed your move. <laughs> bishop takes c5, bishop b5. That looks really strong. That looks really, really, really strong. As you say, you're looking to activate your bishop, and you're looking to take this pawn. One thing, I, I know this from my, I mean, it's not like that these moves just spring to mind, bubble to mind type of thing. But I know this from a lot of my Karo Khan positions where I get isolated pawns and things like that. One move that I absolutely have to keep an eye upon is the move bishop a6. Whenever we see the king on f7 like that, we immediately are attracted to the fact that if we could play queen takes d5 check, our opponent's king is in deep doo-doo, right? Like really, really, really deep doo-doo. So a move like bishop a6 really gets my uh, attention because I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to take your bishop. If you take my bishop, then I have to look at the consequences of bishop takes, queen takes check. Let's see, I don't think there's a choice. Uh, king back to e8, and now, um, Let's see, can we play knight e6, right? OK. So with this move, I think we have kind of a multiple number of threats. 
So first and foremost is I'm an old pawn, br- pawn grubber. Give me a pawn, you know, like, ah, I, I want to grab that pawn. Obviously the queen of rook, obviously knight c7. I think that the, I would, I'd be surprised if this isn't a complete disaster for black and you're not winning, like, just like cold, like cold-bloodedly. So bishop b5 probably is an excellent move, but bishop a6 may really be, you know, bang, in the end. Did you consider bishop a6? I did not. No. Okay. And again, uh, it's just those considerations that, you know, from my years of experience, you know, like whenever there's a king on f7, I just think to myself, oh my god, queen d5. Uh, I mean, you know, like uh, bishop, bishop a6 is kind of a second nature move. Um, knight on d to f6. Well, here your bishop b5 is looking terrific because knight e5 check is stupendous. He is getting killed. <laughs> King e7. Now here, I think it's a, a question of uh, different plans of execution. What were some of the moves that you were considering here? Um, what kind of thoughts? I believe uh, getting the knight to c6 was the well, that Well, in fact, you of course did play knight c6, bishop takes, bishop takes, <laughs> and he's collapsing all over the place. I mean, it's just like one of those things that you just, you're, you're, you're hoping that you got some really, really great combination uh, I mean, it, obviously your eye must it's be attracted to the fact that your rook is on the open C file, so you start to think, gosh, if I could play B4, he'd have to take, my rook has this open file, can I utilize that somehow? Pardon me? Did you just play bishop C6 here? Bishop C6 is also a very powerful looking move. After bishop C6, Basically, the only move I really see for black is something like queen c8 trying to protect the b7, the bishop on b7, as well as the c6 square. But one of the moves that I would be really uh, attracted to is b4, and I'll tell you why in this case. So first of all, again, it's sort of like my extreme desire wanting to punish my opponent for having his king uh, pulled all the way out of its lair. Uh, the fact that that sacrifice opens up my file, but it also leaves this bishop like for the smallest of moments kind of like hanging in midair. Now the move bishop c6 really starts to take on very, very strong, uh, impressive uh, proportions because in this case, once again, we do see the effect of the fact that the bishop on b4 is in midair. Not to say that you don't have other things, but again, my eye would be attracted to b4. Okay, but I like bishop c6. Oops, that wasn't your move. Talk. May. Bishop c6. Knight c6, pardon me. I like it. I love grubbing pawns. <laughs> and this is definitely a, a pawn grub. <laughs> so this is all good. This is all. By the way, if you had played b4 and lost a brilliant game, I'd be sitting here screaming at you, how could you not play <laughs> knight c6 and win a pawn? Did you see that, everybody? He didn't win a pawn. I mean, what, what was he thinking? I mean, you know, like, I live for... Yeah, I, why didn't I sacrifice? I knew it was going to be on display. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so you've achieved uh, the type of position that all grandmasters in today's modern chess world uh, strive for, the extra pawn. And, and, you're a pawn ahead and you've got a lot of pluses. First of all, you have the two bishops, but more important than anything, it's the fact that your opponent's king is still in the center. Knight f6. Okay, now this was an interesting decision. I think many grandmasters 
in this. Okay, you have played bishop b7. Fair enough. Fine move, fine move. I think a lot of grandmasters would have been attempted, <coughs> tempted to trade and to play a bishops of opposite color position. Why? Uh, that, that's where um, uh, uh, people get kind of waylaid. They avoid bishops of opposite co color position because they've been told and they believe and they know that uh, bishops of opposite color position are very drawish. However, in the middle game, which is where we are, you're on the attacking side, which means that with the queens on and the rooks and the bishops, your bishop has no counterpart, neither does this bishop. But since this bishop, you're a pawn ahead, this bishop isn't very good, so a variation may go bishop f6, rook f6, queen f3, yeah? And then your next move is rook d1, and you're trying to go after black's king. So I think a lot of grandmasters would have been tempted by the move uh, Bishop takes f6. You have played bishop b7. Okay, fair enough. Bishop b7. Queen takes d1. Rook f takes d1. Tuck, tuck. Rook e d8. Okay, so you're just going into a nice uh, 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 end game, a pawn to the good, <laughs> with the two bishops on your side as well. Off you king, king f1, excellent move, uh, centralizing your king. g6, I like it, I like it, you're playing very well, nicely done. King e2, rook david7. Okay, here you made an intriguing move. You played bishop a6. Um, what's up with that? Um, was there any reason? The idea is it stops the pawn from moving on the uh, side. Okay. So Okay, so more yeah, so you, so uh, indeed, you you're, you're doing everything very well. You've played the intriguing move, bishop a6. So as you've explained, what you're trying to do is keep these pawns locked up on, the dark on right, and then maybe you'll play bishop b5, right. so that you'll try to uh, get the domination of the uh, d file. The question I would ask is. Uh, what uh, slowed you down? Why why didn't you play bishop c6? Because you d you gain a tempo as well, right? I mean, right. so you attack the rook. If he trades rook, then just as you've just pointed out, you'd be pretty happy that right. you know he he did your job for you. He gave you the so so after bishop c6, maybe he'd have to move his rook. I'm not sure. Then your bishop. You could trade rooks, or don't know. I mean, I was just curious if you had a, a concrete reason in your mind why you didn't yeah, play I, bishop I c6. See, I, I didn't see a difference between bishop. Honestly, I didn't see a difference between bishop to c6 or bishop to a6. a6 is it's out of the way. It's mm. it can't be moved from that spot. It's got a good diagonal. And, uh, it stops all those pawn movements on the queen side. I would agree with you that there's not too much difference with one caveat. And that caveat is bishop c6 is forcing. I mean, you, it, that, that, uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, you know, you, you do, you, you are making a threat with the move bishop c6. Bishop a6 kind of, in a sense, gives them a free hand. It sort of like says, if you want, you can move a pawn. If you want, you can do something. When you play bishop c6, you know, you got to do something about the rook. Okay, but bishop a6, fair, fair enough. I mean, we're splitting hairs, and that's fine. Rook f d8, nice. Now I like what you decided to do, which was rook d3. Somehow I like this. I mean, it's sort of this like you're both being stubborn. Yes. Like I said, dominate that d file. Right, and I like the fact that you weren't. I mean, I wasn't forced or anything. Right, I, that that you weren't, you know, like eagerly trading and you know, something like that. But rook d3 is a nice move. One other thing, don't underestimate the fact that you've got a pretty good rook on the c file, and if you were to play moves like a3 and b4, 
well, that C5 might be, 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 be worth uh, its weight in gold. That's a, that's a good, good file for your rook as well. But I like rook d3. Rook takes d3. Bishop takes d3. Knight to David 5. Now here, um, OK, because you had a choice. You could play a3, but then maybe he's going to play a5. And you went with rook d1, which seems like a reasonable choice. Now, I think here he, he, went, he went too far. Knight b4 is not really a good move. Because uh, you, can, you can deal with that in many ways. I think the simplest is a3, which is, in fact, what you played. Very good. Knight takes d3. Rook takes d3. Now, you're a pawn up, and you've got ideas of b4. In fact, the move b4, b, b4 was so electrifying, he stopped you. And you said, no, I, I actually have two threats. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you about that one. Look, 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 look it over here. Look, look, look what I'm doing. You've got to stop me. Got to stop. Uh, exactly. A nice skewer shot that and uh, he was a gentleman not enough to congratulate you there. I thought you played a nice game. And in this particular case, it's like funny. Um, one bad move, f5. Giving, the the, I mean, boy, 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 Black was immediately thrown on the defensive. Mm -hmm.